here. You want to be able to have people think it through. What did we do and how could it be better? So let's take a look at this. I don't know if I'm going to do it correctly, but it's not Gunner's fault. <laughs> that was worth getting up at five. Thank you. With Chelsea, a lot of her friends also have disabilities, but then several of the ones that don't do really great about playing over. We say just hey, do you want to come play with Chelsea? And we'll, um, really everything that Chelsea likes to do, her friends also like to do. And she has the same interests as all the other kids her age. Kids will come home from school and they say, hey, I played with Samantha today. I played with Leo today. But Chelsea can't do that. And so it really falls on the other parents to reach out and take that first step of, hey, my daughter was really enjoying playing with Chelsea, would we like to get together? Because Chelsea can't do that, she can't facilitate that, she can't even write down her phone number. So what is it like being friends with Chelsea? Uh, she's really nice, she's gentle, um, she doesn't use rough house with anyone, like my siblings do. <laughs> so what would you say to other parents that want their kids to be involved with kids with special needs but just don't know how to go about it? You just go up and say hi. You, you go up on the playground, you go up at, re, at lunch, and it doesn't have to be a huge grand gesture. They don't have to say the right thing. Um, they can go up and ask, you know, why don't you talk? They can go up and, why are you missing an arm? And usually people are very, very good about responding to that. It's the isolation that's hard when you know that other people see you, but none of them come to say hi. None of them come invite you to play with them. And so just reaching out and saying, hey, we're playing tag, do you want to play too? Super easy to do, just like you would do with another kid. And sometimes they just need a little bit of extra help. Um, Chelsea would, well, she sometimes wants to say the prayer, uh, but she can talk or think like, like we do. So I go over there and I whisper what she needs to say to her ears. It's really nice of you. in social situations where you have a child who is low verbal or nonverbal, are there ways to interact? Absolutely, absolutely. Some of your best helpers in that are the peers. Those are the ones that can come up with exactly, and I will show you that in just a little bit. So just remember, for students who are low verbal, nonverbal, what's your piece in this? In, you're going to always ask, in what way can you communicate and can you support the child in communicating? Make sure you reinforce every communication effort. This is not just true of a child who's low verbal or nonverbal. This can also be true for a child who's suddenly not talking, who's talking very little in class and is demonstrating that they really are uncomfortable with talking. So don't think of it in terms of a stationary disability. Think of it in terms of it could happen in lots of different situations. Finally, one of the things that Rick does that we sort of tease him about is his celebration of success. I mean, he celebrates and celebrates and celebrates and you think, stop, stop, I want to talk about what's going wrong. But the truth is that a lot of times you should be starting to, with a celebration of what went right. Because with that celebration, you can end up then in a stepping stone way, figure out what you can fix about what's going wrong. So this is a middle school example of typical 
kids. I think the best way to make new friends in middle school is just talk to them. For the first day, like ask who they are and introduce yourself. The best way to make new friends in middle school is just to be friendly. I'm Devin, I haven't seen you before. I just want to introduce myself. I'm Naomi. Nice um, to meet you. you have history next, right? Mm -hmm. Want to go? Sure. So I'm not going to show you that whole piece because I have something, I have a little less time than I had expected. But the reason that I would show you something with typical kids is really, really an important reason I want you to hang on to that. So these are typical kids. Why might I ask you to observe it? Why might I ask you to really pay attention to it? Who knows? Lights up, do you mind? Who knows? Come on, there's a reason why I showed you typical kids. Yes? Could you do that again? Absolutely. A good compare and contrast. What else? Come on, what else? Yes, please, over here. Good for you. So the idea over here is we want to take a look at how the typical kids behave in that particular uh, milieu, in that particular environment. We want to pick up for them because we don't want to teach a child to do something that is not a match to the rest of the environment. You want to see how do children socially greet one another. Many times what you'll find that um, and no offense to speech and language specialist, but the child has been working in speech and language on greeting one another. Yet the truth is how kids greet one another out in the common areas of the school is quite different than what's going on in the speech and language session. So for you to pay attention to what's going on with students is a great way to do it. Anybody else? You good? All right, let's go on. So, uh, oh, in this one, what you're going to have a chance to see is called Circle of Friends. Now, I told you that Rick and I um, were in inclusion training together. This is one of the most valuable tools I have ever, ever had in my toolbox of, of strategies. And the way that Circle of Friends was used in LA Unified School District when I was there was um, to gather a group of peers and have the peers have lunch together. And we did it every other week. It wasn't a big burden on anybody. We only chose the children to come to Circle of Friends who raised their hands and wanted to be part of the Circle of Friends. And one of the first students I used it with was one of my first students. She was a, a girl with Down syndrome. She was she, she left third grade and moved to another school and became a fourth grader. She had a lovely young teacher, just, just lovely. And one day I walked onto the school campus and the, the teacher walked up to me and she's crying. And she said, I can't do this. I can't do this. Every time we're out on the playground and the kids are playing with one another and the bell rings, like every single time she runs in the other direction. Do you know how embarrassing it is for me? I'm an experienced teacher and I can't get this kid to line up. I, I can't do this. So we had a circle of friends meeting and we sat there together at lunch and the, the kids are uh, um, all just relaxing and I, I started with the one on my right. And Lily is second to my left. We start with the kid on the right, and she says, well, you know what, When the, just before the bell rings, I have a watch, just before the bell rings, I'll go up to her, and I'll let her know that the bell is going to ring. And then that way, she won't be scared and run in the other direction. And then we go to the next kid, and the next kid has another idea. And another kid says, you know what? I'm going to make sure that I play with her at the end of recess. That way, she and I can walk in together. And we go to the next kid, and each one has a sweet, sweet idea that you think, 
Oh, thank God, this is going to work. This teacher's not gonna have a nervous breakdown in front of me. And we get all the way around to Lily. And Lily says, why don't I just line up? <laughs> don't kid yourself. These, some of these kids with disabilities, some of the, and of course they're typical peers, I mean, with both of them, but some of the kids with Down syndrome that I have gotten to work with over the years have been the joys of my life, the joys of my life, and she was one of them. Absolutely a riot. Now this group, this school uses circle of friends a little bit differently. So I, I don't want you to be intimidated by the choices that they made, but I want you to see how valuable a tool it is. Ready, set, go. The Standard School District is making a difference in the lives of their students with special needs. 23 ABC's Mark Christian tells about a new program the district has participated in this year that has decreased bullying and is making a significant social impact. Socialization at school can be intimidating for a lot of students, but isolation doesn't make me feel lonely anymore. Is usually the norm for a student with special needs. I don't feel lonely anymore because I got lots of friends. The Standard School District has implemented the program to help kids with special needs improve their social skills. A lot of times, the students with special needs they have ten friends. They're in their class. They do everything together. They don't really get outside of the special needs classroom. It's called Circle of Friends, and it establishes friendships between students with disabilities such as autism, Down syndrome, and other learning disabilities with their non-disabled peers to break down social barriers. There is a huge similarity. There's nothing different. We're both humans. We both walk on this earth. Parents say the program has been a life changer for their kids with special needs. It's one of the most important things, just, just for him feeling normal and just feeling included. Um, I think I think that's very important for anybody, and especially someone with special needs. Circle of Friends builds lasting friendships, and studies show that improving social skills increases self-esteem, which can lead to a more successful adult life. They were discouraged before, but now since they are accepted, they can see there's nothing wrong. There's nothing wrong. I can be accepted. I can go out in the world and do whatever I want to do. All the kids look forward to getting together every Wednesday where they have lunch and do a variety of social activities. Educators say it has made a lasting difference at the school. It's very thankful that we were able to bring this program to our school just because it's changing the whole dynamic. Mark Christian, 23 ABC. So uh, what I wanted you to be able to see is this school did it a little bit differently. This school did it uh, across the school uh, with and had quite the impact. In uh, LA Unified School District, when I was working with Eagle Rock High School, uh, Eagle Rock High School and, and Middle School, um, one of the students we had was a student named Raymond. That's not really his name. I am being confidential. Don't report me. So, um, uh, but one of the students was Raymond, and he was unable to uh, verbally communicate. So the um, assistive technology person brought this button in and said, well, you know, you guys can uh, go ahead and uh, put uh, whatever you want on the button, you know, and showed us how to record it and everything. And uh, the, the kids that I was working with that were part of his circle of friends were also part of the leadership team, and they were like, you're going to put Miss Franklin's voice on this thing? No, you're not. It should be a boy's voice. He's a boy, you know, and it actually, it should be a kid's voice. So they did all the recording. Now, I'm going to say, left to the grown-ups, it would be Miss Franklin's voice, because they just figured, you go ahead and do it. You're the inclusion facilitator. But the truth is, it should be a peer's voice on that system. And they got to work with him for quite a while. Everybody learned how to use his various equipment, and that was part of his circle of friends. So just remember, if you are lucky enough to work with uh, one of the inclusion facilitators in LA Unified School District, part of what you can talk to them about is circle of friends and how might it be used to improve the quality of the students' uh, relationships and improve the quality of their lives. So I, I am going to say when there is a problem, 
There's not a soul in here that's going to be a problem admirer. Do you know any problem admirers? Yeah, just a few, right? Problem admirers spend lots and lots of time talking about the problem. And they get very, very little time on the solution. So let's do some tools for solution finding. Um, some of you already have lots of ideas about how to solve problems. That's great. Some of you are not necessarily experienced as a BII, but you're experienced in life. And you understand that there's lots and lots of ways to get to fixing a problem. I'm going to show you two semi-formal ways. And then when I ask to have this put up on the website, I will unhide all the slides that have the details about it, OK? So I'm just giving you the overview in this one. Oh, I forgot. Oh, my gosh. Uh, I thought it would be so great to hear a student's perspective on problem solving. So um, <laughs> last night, in the middle of the night, I got up and put this boy on here. He's pretty cool. <laughs> I want to share with y'all a message that I believe with all my heart is that people who are small can solve big problems. One group that I specifically think can make the biggest change is kids. People underestimate the power of kids in general. They certainly underestimate our power to do something about big problems. We can do a lot, even though it seems at times that we only want to do nothing in particular. I admit that kids give adults the idea when we say things like, all I want to do is play video games, I'd rather sit in my room with my phone, school is trash, and other foul is fair and fair is foul nonsense. But the world would be a 100% better place if kids were involved in the important things. I mean, we're the ones being affected by it the most. Take gun control laws in relation to school safety, for example. It's the kids who are getting killed, and we should have a say in these decisions because we're the ones who are being affected by it. Adults think that kids don't have anything meaningful to contribute. Kids think that there are no opportunities for them to contribute anything meaningful. Don't let anyone look down on you because you are young, but set an example in your speech, life, love, faith, and purity. I was with a group of kids when I first heard this quote, and I instantly loved it because it's a roadmap to kids on how to do something we aren't usually encouraged to do. Lead. Long story short, the world needs kids to lead with our speech, talking about it, life, putting our time into it, love, having a passion for it, faith, unwavering belief, and purity, transparent action. Then adults will stop staring into their phones and help us conquer the world, I mean, change the world. Isn't he adorable? <laughs> you know, I, I was recently involved in uh, um, the Gay Pride Festival in my little town of Tehachapi, which is a very conservative town. And I belong to a church that's all about social justice. I mean, we do pray, but it's got a lot of social justice mixed in. So, um, so we decided to have a presence at this festival, and uh, we have a booth, and uh, we're so thinking, oh, this is going to be so cool. And this uh, young man comes up, well, not young man, you know, uh, some guy comes up and he starts arguing that a church should not be at a festival, that it has no place at a festival. And so here I am, I'm an old lady mixed in with the other old ladies, and we're, you know, talking to this person to get him to stop screaming at us because he got louder and louder and louder. And this young man came out of the crowd and walked up to him and talked to him so respectfully, so calmly, talked him through step by step while we were there. I thought to myself, we just don't often give kids enough credit for how they are able to handle so many of the things that are going to be in front of them in their lives. It's just amazing to me. It was amazing. So um, 
Anyway, he joined our church, which was very cool, you know. <laughs> so anyway, um, problem solving for students and for us. So what I've done is I've given you a problem solving slide in here for those of you who, uh, what I'm gonna say is sometimes we jump over this second step, this brainstorm of ideas. Sometimes somebody in the group will have an idea. They'll take that idea and they will leap over it and call it the solution. The truth is, Brainstorming is an important step, and I don't want you to miss it. I don't want you to miss out on hearing all the genius that you hear from other people. You've got so many things that you could put into the solution, but you're not going to get there if you don't do that step. So the first one, define the problem. Second one, the brainstorm. Third one, decide on a solution. What are you going to do? Third, fourth one, implement the solution. Review the results. What I'm going to say is go back to the top. Is there still a problem? That doesn't mean we have to admire it, but it does mean we have to address it. Same thing here. This is uh, called sodas. And in sodas, you've got a situation, you've got options, you've got the disadvantages, the advantages, and the solution. Again, you have to go back through the whole process. Got it? So when you see this PowerPoint, when you go online and you take a look at it, I want you to recognize that there's step-by-step -step process for each of these two things. So again, you're not alone. You're not alone, guys. You've, there's lots of solutions out there. So let's move on into collaboration where you will be using some solution finding. So in collaboration, one of your biggest problems, or I should say one of the biggest things you're going to want to find a solution for is whose job is this? Now you think about a classroom, a busy, busy classroom. Some of you are very clear. Ah, this is my job description, this is what I do. Some of you will walk into situations where the teacher will say, I know that's your job description, but I need you to fill in the blank, do something different than what you're there for. So I want you to be very, very clear that understanding what your job is and that the student is job one and that you might at times be able to do some other things and you're happy to help I want you to have an answer for somebody who's pressuring you like that. I need to make sure that my student is uh, settled in the job, in the task, whatever's been assigned, before I do something else. I need to be near enough to my student so I can continue to observe him. Do not be afraid to set parameters for yourself. I want you to make sure that you really understand you've got that kind of power in IECP. That's what we want you to be able to do. Keep the eye on the prize, that's the kiddo, but also make sure that you're part of the team. Next one, you're working with a student with very different learning styles and very different learning activities than the rest of the class. <coughs> what do you need to get that student engaged? What do you need to figure out how can I get help? Where can I get help? What can I ask? So these are some of the things you can use to go back and use those problem-solving situations. Got it? Some of those uh, methodologies. What I really want you to have in your head is this need-to-know list. You know, I need to know how this child learns. I, I, I need to know you know, I need to have established what his learning outcomes are. Are there accommodations I can use? Can I modify this material? How much time will this task take? What are the support strategies outlined? What, 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 what? All kinds of things, right? The good part is that you can do it. The good part is you can take a deep breath and say to yourself, oh, I'm going to take the next step. I'm going to figure this out. You also need to ask questions when you need help. There's no shame, no shame in asking for help. You need to demonstrate confidence, and that demonstrate confidence within asking for help. You don't have to ask for help thinking that somebody's going to be mad. You can ask for help in a way that says, uh, I'm happy to do that, 
but tell me a little bit more about the task that you want me to do. That's just fine. And then make sure that you have access to other members of the collaborative team. Uh, some people are already a closed shop. One of the jobs that I took, I walked in and every single assistant um, was already best friends with the other assistants in the class. And uh, it was an assessment center, so I was going to get kids for three months and then they would go back to their schools or we would finish assessing them. And I, I walked up to one of the assistants and I put out my hand and I said, hi, I'm Nancy Franklin. And she said, I don't know if I have the energy to break in another teacher this year. I don't know if I can. And I was so taken, I thought you'd laugh at that, no? Okay, I, I said to her, it's gonna be just fine. You're gonna learn from me and I'm gonna learn from you. And we are still friends now, 20 years later. So what I want you to know is sometimes you're gonna to have to take a step back. It's gonna to be tough. And sometimes you're going to have to get past some initial impressions. But remember, collaboration can what? Divide the task, keep going, and multiply the successes. That's what collaboration can do. Yay, we're at the skills section. All right, woohoo! All right, that means that I have less than 15 minutes. So hang in there, guys. We're gonna do the skill section. First skill, what is it? Read it. <laughs> All right, let's not be arrogant with one another. The skill, I, you know, I did some research on this no arrogance policy because I thought, how am I gonna talk to a whole group of people about it? And the idea is that you've got that balance between confidence where you know what you're supposed to be doing and then without talking about yourself too much. It's really a tough line, but it's something you can do. Listen more than you talk in the beginning. Listen, take in that new information. And don't be afraid to ask questions. Next one. Remember you are collaborating with your student's team. You are an important member of the team. You are gonna be ready with information and you are gonna take notes and ask clarifying questions. There is no harm in saying, I haven't been able to open the file that tells me about the student yet, but I can do it when I get home or I can do it later today. So if people try to put you on the spot and say to you, what do you mean you're assigned to this kiddo and you don't know all these things about this child? I want you to have a fallback response. Don't feel uncomfortable about it. Skills to teach and reinforce. Focus skills are in the behavior treatment plan. Take the time to familiarize yourself with all the aspects of that plan. And then don't forget the part that we talked about yesterday. Many of these skills have multiple parts. Break them down, teach them in sections, but also notice that sometimes you can't do part two until you really have mastered part one. So pay attention to the skill development. Next one, rapport. I can't emphasize enough that ability to build rapport. Now again, just like the no arrogance uh, tightrope, you've got a tightrope around rapport. And that tightrope is about you are not that kid's friend but you do have to build rapport. It's a tough way to go forward, but you can do it. It's a matter of being friendly, not friends. Pleasant, but not a buddy. Understand their motivation. The reason or reasons that somebody is behaving in a certain way, but also you want to get them to the point where they are willing to try something else. And finally, reinforcement. You want to make sure that you understand the schedule of reinforcement. So those are the skills that you're going to be covering with your uh, BIDs when you're in your breakout session. But I want to emphasize this. Knowing when to ask for support. The first one is when you're asked to do something you don't think is in your job description, something that you don't think you're supposed to do, 
That's something that you, where you need to ask for help. Here's the next one. When you see something and your gut tells you that's not right, that's not right. That's not the way it's supposed to be. So many of the heroes that I get to read about are people who did just that. In their guts, they knew, oh, this is, doesn't look right. I got to do something about it. Know when to ask for support when you are told. When you are told something about another student and you realize it's breaking confidentiality and you want to be really, really careful there not to join into that conversation. Make sure that you hold yourself away from those conversations, no matter how much fun they might be. And then when you have questions. So, perseverance. One of the things that makes me so sad is that some people enter these jobs thinking they're not gonna stay for very long. They're gonna do it for a couple of months, see how it is, you know, maybe I'll stay a year. I'm gonna to say to you that every one of you becomes such an important part of your children's lives. You become such an important part that I'm gonna ask you this year to persevere. So I did some research and I was looking at what are the characteristics of people who stick with a job? You wanna know what they are? Here they are. Perseverance in working with others. They get past those first impressions. Your first impression might be, I don't want to be friends with anybody in this office. I don't like any of these people. That might be your first impression. They take a step back from that and say, oh, let, let me see how it is. Think about what's going to help you to be successful. Who's going to make it in this room? Who's going to make it and stick with it? Well, the research says employees that want to challenge <clears throat> and have the willingness to attempt difficult tasks and goals. Those are the people who are going to stick with it. P employees that are persistent and stay tenacious, even though there's significant obstacles, even though there's a big learning curve, you want, you thirst for that information. You're interested in self-improvement. You want to get to be better at something. Employees that have a desire for decision making, those are the ones who make it. The willingness to accept decision making responsibility. Ones that are comfortable working under pressure with time schedules and in busy, busy environments. And people who are optimistic, who believe the future will be positive. Employees that are straightforward, direct, to the point, and forthright. They make it. Employees who are assertive, and they put forth their students' needs, but also their own needs. They are flexible, and they understand that this is, this is a school environment. It's going to change. You've got to hang in there and be flexible. People who are open and reflective, able to reflect on many different viewpoints. So what you're going to do is you're going to form some groups. And I'll keep flicking through these three slides. But I want you to tell people who are near you a characteristic that you believe you already have and any that you want to get better at doing so that you can challenge yourself and stick with it, persevere. All right, you ready? I'm going to give you a little bit more time, maybe like three minutes, OK? So here are the characteristics. So those of you who were napping while I was going through them, I want you to have them, all right? And what's going to help you to be successful? Here they are. Stand up and talk with one another. And be clear, you're a good person. What do you have that's going to help you stick with it?
Okay, finish your last sentence. Thank the person you've been talking to. Or give them a high five, whatever. <laughs> I can't tell you how much I wish you well. I can't tell you. I'm so excited that you are going to be the people that help our children to have a very successful year because you seem so absolutely genuine, and I really appreciate that. So you did that. And now it's time to talk about a little something else. What's your kipple? Who knows what kipple is? Anybody? Where are my readers of the New York Times? All right, kipple is actually all the junk that comes, you know, that ends up on your kitchen counter. Kipple is junk. So uh, at the end of the day, you reach in your pocket and you pull out all this stuff, and, and that's what kipple is. But when I was reading the article about Kipple in the New York Times the other day, I thought, I need to talk to you guys about Kipple. I need to talk to you about it, but I'm going to give it a slightly different definition. Kipple is the stuff that has gotten in my way throughout my career. Kipple. It's the junk, you know, the, the stuff that you think to yourself, Oh, I, I'll, I'll get that organized, or, or I'll do that to-do list. I, I think a to-do list is such a good idea, but you know what? Where's my pencil? Where's my paper? I've got this other stuff I've got to take care of, and oops, I haven't made dinner yet, and oh, I, I never got to it. So I, when I think about Kipple, I think to myself of my own desk when Rick first convinced me to come and do this I was, I was looking at my desk and I've got piles of things from all of the different activities that I'm doing. And I, I leaned back in my desk chair and I thought, it's Kipple. That's what this is. This is standing in the way of being able to be with all of you wonderful people today. It's all the stuff that stands in the way and I'm not going to let it stand in the way. So I got a big table and I took everything off my desk and I thought, what do I want to say to you? What do I want you to learn on these days that we're together? And that's all that was on my desk for days. Oh, I want to make sure that we talk about this, and I want to make sure that we talk about that, because I got the kipple out of my way. I got all that stuff out of my way. Finally, in the end, you know, I, I was looking at it, and I thought, you know, um, this has been true of me my whole career that I have found ways to get in the way of being great. You know, like I could do a good job, or if I get this stuff out of the way, I can do a great job. That's what I want you to be able to do this year. You've all got kipple. You've all got stuff that is standing in your way from doing the things of your dreams, whether it's going back to school, whether it's becoming something else, whether it's doing the best damn job as a BII this year and next and the next and the next. Whatever your dreams are, I want you to move your kipple out of your way. Move all that junk out and be great. Be the greatest people you can be this year. I know you can do it. If I had influence with the good fairy, and I do not, I should ask her that her gift to each child in the world would be a sense of wonder so indestructible that it would last throughout life. I want you to bring your sense of wonder to school this year. Open it up and be wonderful. So thank you so much for having me here. Now, what we're going to do now is we're going to get a chance to introduce the behavior intervention developers, the supervisors. So I'm going to ask the supervisors to come on up and get prepared so Rick can introduce you. Come on, you can do it. Bring your stuff with you if you want. There's a nice little catwalk on either side you can use. Thank you again, Nancy. 
All right, as Nancy said, the BIDs can come up here. You guys keep your mask on because we're all going to be on the stage together, BIDs, and come up behind in front of the thing over here. And then I'll have you guys come up so everyone can see your face with your mask off um, so they know how to find you. So a qu couple of quick things before we go to our review for the rest of the day. Um, and we're going to give you, we're not going to be coming back in this auditorium um, today. Okay, hopefully we'll be coming back in this auditorium in the future, if we're welcome back, because it is so nice. <laughs> um, and we have such an awesome crew helping us out. But we won't be coming back here today. So I'm going to go over the schedule for today. Um, but before I do that, I just again want to say thank you guys for being here, for being part of IACP, and most importantly for deciding to spend your career, at least this year, and for many of you, for many years, working with children and making their lives better. It, it, is, it is the best job in the world. It truly is. It is, it is fun, enjoyable, um, and uh, never boring. Never boring. Um, so for the rest of the day, what we're going to be doing is you're going to be going back to the same classrooms you were in yesterday in the morning. So when you leave here, you're going to go back to those same classrooms. Okay? We're going to stay there until about 12.15, because we'll give you guys a little bit more time, okay? So we're going to stay there. So those of you who are busy and not looking at your text, good job, you guys. 12.15. So I'm not going to text you guys. So we're going to stay in those classrooms until 12.15. Um, and then after that, we're going to go to the quad, and we're going to have lunch. After lunch, you're going to hear us all kind of getting together. Maybe we're going to blow that whistle that we've got. We'll figure it out. And we're going to break into groups with your BID team. Okay, we're gonna break into groups with your BID team, and we're gonna do something for you veteran BIIs, different, we're gonna do camp by ECP, but because this room really isn't conducive to it, we're gonna do it out on the quad. Um, and we're gonna do activities, it's gonna also be getting to know your BID, and what and expectations for the year, and some team building within your BID and BII group. So we're gonna do that until the end of the day. At the end of the day, we have a really cool activity where we're all gonna try and get into groups and figure out a way at the quad to get into our big closing circle. And we do this every year at our all staffs where we get into a big closing circle at the beginning of the year and everybody shares a word. We have a big group as loud as they can that represents their feeling about the upcoming school year. And I just wanna read you one that I got, um, was so cool that um, one of our very senior BIIs who, who's got an emergency and wasn't able to be here today, um, Janice Henry, many of you guys know Jan Henry. Um, we've been here for, I think, probably over 15 years now. And without any talk about the closing circle or anything, just so bummed that she couldn't come to our first all staff in years, she says to me, Rick, could not see it without that. She <laughs> says to me, Rick, <laughs> My eyes have gotten worse since COVID, you guys, um, over the last three years. Um, she says to me, um, I'll leave you with my closing word. We didn't talk about the closing circle, but she just knew that we'd be doing our closing circle. She said, I'll leave you with my closing, my closing word for the year, and it is endure. BIIs have the fortitude to endure to the end. Endure. And so we're going to ask all of you guys to think of a word, not a phrase, because there's a lot of you, a word, and we're going to share that at the end of the day. Um, but after lunch, you're going to be joining up with your BID. So on your sheet that was given out yesterday with your room numbers and everything, there was a sticker. It said math complex such and such number, right? And then it had your BID's name on there. Does everybody see that? Raise your hand if you see your BID, a name at the bottom. I don't know if it says BID or not. Raise your hand. That's your BID's name, okay? And so, when I call the BID up, because some of you don't know them yet, so you can see them and know where to go, I want everyone in that BID's group to stand up. For two reasons. One is just so everybody can see you, right? And you can see your colleagues. But also, so when we're looking to where to go in that huge quad area, and there's 16 groups, that maybe you don't remember the BID's face, but you'll remember somebody who stood up with you, okay? So we're gonna practice. And we'll start with Don's group. So Don, come on forward. If you have Don on your sticker, go ahead and stand up. And Don, take your mask off so they can see what you look like. Stand up if you're with Don. Wave your hands back and forth. Look around. Look around. Look around. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Look around. Scream. Make some noise. Woo! Don's group. All right. So you guys will be finding Don. OK, thank you. Jenna. If you've got Jenna on your sticker, stand up. If Jenna is on your sticker, stand up. Awesome. You're going to be meeting with Jenna after lunch, okay? Jenna, you guys all see Jenna? 
Okay. Yay, Jenna. Okay. If you have Natalie on your sticker, stand up. If you have Natalie on your sticker, stand up. Uh, you guys will be meeting with Natalie after lunch. Okay, you're all going to find each other, and you're going to find an area of the quad, and you're going to join up with Natalie's team. Nayeli, if you have Nayeli, stand up. Look around, see who your peers are, your team for this year is. That's Nayeli's team, and you're going to be in a group with Nayeli. Yay! Sharon, if you have Sharon, stand up if you have Sharon. Woo, okay. Lots of familiar faces. Sharon does not let her BIIs go anywhere. Um, okay. <laughs> so you'll be joining with Sharon. Howie, if you guys have Howard or Howie, I don't know what they wrote on the sticker. If, they, if you have Howie on your sticker um, or Howard, go ahead. All right, yay, you guys will be meeting with Howard at lunch. We have a new addition to our BID team who was a BII for nine years, which we just absolutely love. Edgar, come on up, Edgar. Woo! Edgar was a nine-year senior BII, got his master's degree, did some supervision in our home programs, and is now a part of the BID team. So if you have Edgar, stand up. If you have Edgar on your sticker, stand up. Awesome. Look around, see who your teammates are, and you'll be meeting together at lunch with Edgar. All righty. Okay, Chris. If you have Chris or Christian, I don't know what's on the sticker. Do you know Chris? Do you know if it's Chris or Christian? If you have Christian on your sticker, stand up, stand up. Yeah, you'll be meeting with Chris or Christian at, the, uh, at lunchtime today with your team. We have another new member of our BID team who was a BII, how many years ago, Keith? 10 years ago, and he came back now as a BID. If you have Keith on your sticker, stand up. If you have Keith on your sticker, stand up. You'll be meeting with Keith at lunchtime. Yay. Okay, we have our Shamita. Come on up, Shamita. If you have Shamita on your sticker, oh, you got a large group, Shamita. Whoa, if you have Shamita on your sticker, look around, see who your team is. Okay, remember to tell Shamita happy birthday yesterday. Yay. Hey, talking about birthdays, do we have any other birthdays today? I know we have at least one. Stand up if it's your birthday. Stand up if it's your birthday. Is it just David? Everyone say happy birthday to David. Happy birthday, David. Okay, Tina, come on up. If you're in Tina's team, stand up. Stand up, look around, see who your team is. This is Tina. You'll be finding her at lunchtime. Yay, Tina. Okay, if you have Jennifer on your, on your sticker, you're gonna be with Jennifer at lunchtime. Yay! Look around, see who they are. Okay, that's Jennifer. Laura! If you have Laura, look around, see who's on your team. Yay, some familiar faces. Awesome, we'll be meeting with Laura. Wendy! Woo! <laughs> if you have Wendy, stand up. If you have Wendy on your sticker, you'll be meeting with Wendy at lunchtime. Oh, BST, if you are in the BST team, thank you. If you are in the BST team, you'll be meeting with Wendy as well at lunch. Awesome, Wendy, thank you. And Kristen, come on over here, Kristen. If you have a slight change, Kristen, I just forgot to notice on this. If you have Rachel on your sticker, we made a quick change, hey, we're flexible here. We're flexible, creative. We got, there is nothing is impossible. Right. Nothing, as Myra Gutierrez said to Nancy Sly, the impossible, and Myra said, nothing is impossible. We can get through anything. And so if you have Rachel, stand up. If you have Rachel on your sticker, Rachel is out sick. She was trying so hard to get here, and she just cannot, and it's not smart in these times for her to come. And so if you have Rachel on your sticker, you'll be meeting with Kristen during Camp IECP after lunch, okay? Thank you. Christian, come back forward. If you have Lily on your sticker, or Elizabeth Davidson, I'm not sure what it says on the sticker. If you have Elizabeth Davidson or Lily, stand up. Elizabeth Davidson or Lily, you will be meeting with Christian's group as well because you guys tend to share a lot of the same stuff. Awesome, okay. We all good?
Thank you, everybody. We're going to go to our next session, and then we'll see you guys after that in the quad. But next session, go to the restrooms and meet in your classrooms you were in yesterday. Thank you, everybody. Clean up after Kristen. <laughs>